That's the other glove. I mean, that is impossible. I mean, literally impossible. It is just... It's gone. It's vanished. I haven't been anywhere. I've been in this little room. Found it. It's over here. Alright. All these last runs, all these cap runs, I've done at a at 110 amps. Okay. Nineteen and one went half of one went back in the box. So that's twenty it's taken for those two runs. That was the final fill and pass and the final cap and run. So I've welded all the way round on the route run for that one. So I have actually got my uh, my 3D printer has actually arrived, but um, I'm not sure I'm gonna have time to rig it up today and also I haven't got the slicer software installed yet so I just need to uh, I'll probably have a go at that in the week too busy today now I don't wear the face shield very often but this flying at me so I've got to put this dopey thing on to uh, get around here and ground back now um, I was actually going to hopefully just go straight over with the with the rod but I'm going to do another um, another tick run just to make sure that I can get right into that joint I know I'll be able to with the with the tick torch and then I'll finish it off with the stick going to do this in two goes so I don't want to um, get it too hot risk distorting it I'm just gonna go one on this side now and then I'll leave it for a bit <clears throat> it's a bit awkward here it's the problem with small boats I don't like cutting my rod down I'll have to This is awkward. So, bought this uh, dopey apron thing uh, simply because last week I was actually, I was using, I was on standard on the machine and I was standing here like this and a bit of my clothing got caught in the uh, uh, the feed screw and it sucks me in so there's nothing like a uh, a near miss to make you do something proper so the idea I bought this one because it's got these like um, peg things on it um, so that hopefully if it did get caught it will just come straight off that's the idea anyway I just sort of manhandled it in on my own uh, and I've just tipped it up just so I can have a look at the surface and it looks it looks absolutely marvellous so that looks like a good a good job I think I have to get it off uh, another day we've got time now
Right. Um, so the tower is back from machining. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll get it out of the packet today. I have I have looked and it's a really good finish on the bottom, so we're all good with that. But uh, I might not actually get it out today because I don't really need to and it's quite conveniently wrapped up for now. Um, so today I'm going to weld these onto the variable tanks. So that's the last job to do for the variable tanks. Um, I won this uh, welder in a competition. I use a company called Metal Supermarkets, not sponsored by them or anything. I just put a picture of the submarine on the website and I won um, best homemade vehicle category. So they sent me this machine, which is nice of them. Um, so this is a flux cord, like gasless wire welder. Now I've never used one of these before. I mean, it's not going to be suitable for submarine stuff, but it will be handy um, for stuff uh, out and about, which I do sometimes. Um, my own equipment isn't very portable. Well, it's not portable at all, actually. Um, so this would be quite handy for uh, out and about type, type jobs. Um, although it does say 120 volts, which I need to crank out the transformer for, but um, I think my brother's got it. But they also got, they sent these uh, gloves, look, flames on. Whoa. So it looks, uh, it looks quite nice actually. Um, it's nicely made. Um, nice and compact. There's no wire though, it's just a bit of a blow. And it is 110, 120 volts, which means I can't test it out today. But, but I like that. Ground uh, that to a to a bevel, a chamfer, whatever. Um, I'm just I've just put a tack on. Just going to try and bend it into the appropriate place now. I've made sure that I don't fall into the trap of wind welding it the wrong way up. These are the two vents at the top. It's the sort of thing that I would do. Right, so I just started doing this um, first run. I was going to do two runs on this, and I just realised I just used a 309 rod instead of a 316, which is what I should have used. So this has got to come off now. Typical. So I've done a uh, first pass round on that, that one, and I've started the, the second uh, pass around on that one but I'm just going to let them cool a bit I don't want to get them too hot I don't want to damage or risk damaging the um, the thread or the the, the, the special uh, double ferrule seal in there by by twisting it uh, so I'm just being really cautious so, uh, I'll finish the joints now so those are on uh, welded so those two are welded on and I've managed to do it I think without still pretty hot but without damaging the uh, the ferrule and the, the, the thread and everything so uh, here we are so I'm going to chop this off about there right Alright, so you gotta get these the right way round. So that one, then that one, then the pipe. Let's screw it up. I'm just gonna double check it's all the way down. What this is, you have to go uh, finger tight, then one and a quarter turns. this 
that's the wrong one. quarter and a bit for luck that stops that one getting damaged anyway uh, these others this one is a um, this is the high pressure air inlet so I need a, um, a half inch to six mil swage lock which I haven't got or small pipe adapter tube adapter even and this one is the the drain and I'm not uh, not really sure what I'm going to do. Uh, I need to get a valve on or some sort of... Um, might just put like a blank blank on it so you can just unscrew a thing. That would probably be the easiest. Uh, anyway, yes, so for now um, we'll consider those done and they'll be ready to go on as and when. 